Hotep African family, I am Dr. Terry Nelson. I am a metaphysician, an educator, and a clinician. I am co-founder of the Academy of Kemetic Education and Wellness, where we teach the African origins of the ancient Egyptian wisdom. I am also adjunct faculty at the University of Massachusetts, teaching in the Africana Studies Department. Today's presentation is entitled, Seeking the Secrets and the Science of Consciousness. And we will seek these secrets and science of consciousness by tracing back to the ancient wisdom of Kemet. This lecture, this presentation, will be a synthesis of my work and the books that I have authored. The first book is Ka Aba, Building the Lighted Temple. This book is an African-centered paradigm teaching psychology, human development, character development, spirituality, and history. History that is that underpins our experience as diaspora and as African. This book also is the first degree program, which is a nine month certification program that I teach in the Academy of Kemetic Education in Wellness. Second is my book, Secrets of Race and Consciousness. So I'll be emphasizing aspects of this book as well. And my third book, The Golden Sun Egg Uncracked. And my newest book, Ka Aba, The Great Pyramid is the Tree of Life, Merkaba. In seeking the secrets and science of consciousness comedically understood, we begin with these five primary questions. The first is, what may we be conscious of? The second is, who is doing the looking or having the awareness? The third is, how are we experiencing these states of consciousness? In other words, what is our apparatus? The fourth is which state of consciousness of the three primary types, which I will talk about momentarily, are we primarily in? And fifthly, where are we today in the challenges in the human family as a planetary consciousness? And in my book, Seeking the Secrets of Race and Consciousness, I talk about this planetary consciousness as three, four, five, after the golden triangle, also called ASICA, and that acronym stands for African Semitic Aryan Consciousness Admixture. So we'll really look at what is the consciousness admixture planetary-wide at this time. Our study in entering into this comedic science brings us into the understanding of the Ka'aba or Merkaba, which is our luminous energy body of light. What is this luminous energy body of light? This luminous energy body of light is our vehicle of first eye spherical consciousness. It's our vehicle of rebirth. It's our vehicle of transformation, of resurrection, of ascension, transport, empowerment, enlightenment, initiation, and service. So in our study of consciousness, we come in rapport with understanding what is this vehicle that is us. And this vehicle that is us, that is bringing us into this dimensional shift in consciousness is to learn the mechanics uh, and the science of indwelling the Ka'aba Merkaba luminous energy body of light. In this study, we must come again in rapport with our divine trinity from the Nile Valley, from Kemet, which our African ancestors called Osur, or Wasur, Haru, or Aset. Uh, again, Aset, Haru, and Wasur. And these terms of this divine trinity coincide or correspond with the terms Ka'aba. In our study of the secrets and the science of consciousness, we first come into 
the ritual and the ceremony of the weighing of the heart. We first come into the judgment scene of the Hall of Amenta that our African ancestors have given us. Our African ancestors were masters in the science of the soul and the journey of the soul and, its transmig and the transmigration of the soul. And key to understanding consciousness, our African ancestors gave us the judgment scene where we see on the scale the weighing of the heart against the lightness of the feather of my art. Our African ancestors have taught us that the heart is the seat of conscience and growing soul consciousness. And as we live our lives in accord with the laws of my art, our heart is becoming uh, as light as a feather. In other words, we are transmuting those matters, those substances, those pa often painful uh, matters in our lives. And as we transmute those substances, we make our heart uh, light as a, the feather of my art. And here, pictured in this frame, you see the 42 laws listed. Uh, they are inclusive of all the ways that we attend to the kingdoms in nature, how we are stewards of the mineral kingdom and stewards of the vegetable kingdom, how we as stewards of the vegetable kingdom watch over the well-being of instead of def deforest, causing our, our forests to be decimated, we, we watch over our forests. We are stewards over the animal kingdom and we are stewards over in, within the human kingdom and the kingdom of souls. So the 42 laws teach us how to be in accord with universal law like um, I have done no, I have not done inequity, I have not um, caused pain, I have not murdered, I have not uh, mistreated children and I have not mistreated animals, uh, I have not polluted myself. So through our comedic practices, we are learning how to come in accord with the laws of my art so that when we come before the scales, our heart may be as light as a feather. In this next slide, uh, we see after being found Ma Karu and having had our heart found as light as a feather, it is the Haru within us that aspect of our divine trinity that then brings us before the lord of the world or the neb of the world in this slide here, which is Wasur. So this Haru, which is uh, the, the Karas within us, that is bringing us before the lord of the world that we may be found Ma Karu. And later uh, in Christianity, the way that this would get recapitulated is the expression that no one can come before the, the Father except through the Son. But we can see in this slide that this conception predates Christianity because it is the Haru, or also called the Karest within us, that brings us before the Lord of the world was Sir. But moreover, <clears throat> what we want to come in rapport with is the weighing of the heart is a daily practice where we make this recitation at the end of our day that we have been in accord with these 42 laws. And at the end of our lives when we come before the scale, uh, we want to have lived our life in balance and in harmony so that our heart is found in as light as the feather of, of Ma'at. We as a planet and as a planetary consciousness, as a collective consciousness of humanity, we are now undergoing in this world period the weighing of the planetary heart of collective consciousness of humanity. 
the weighing of the planetary heart of collective humanity is likewise occurring at this time. In the judgment scene, the whole of humanity now enters within the halls of Amente on the inner realm. And as a collective humanity, we are now offering to the Neb or the Lord of the world our strides at just living and godly service on earth or, or as our African ancestors have called Geb. Together, as a collective humanity in consciousness, we constitute the body of Haru, also called the Karest. And it is in this mass formation now that we, we constitute the living nature uh, as Osir. And one by one, as individual men and women are found Ma Karu, we join the ranks to form a collective critical mass which changes the whole of the planetary mind which, uh, of, in consciousness. Standing before the Lord of the world, this inner group is at one with divine will, love, purpose, and plan. And we stand in the image and likeness of this living nature on earth as one humanity. This Lord of the world is known by many names, Asur, uh, God, Allah, Jehovah, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. And just as man and woman are working to bring personal will in accord with divine will on an individual level, so is collective humanity working to come into alignment with planetary will. And, and you see here in this slide, the, we see the, our Earth picture <clears throat> as this planetary happening is now occurring in consciousness. And if we dispel the word Earth, as I give these keys to dispelling words and symbols, is the word Earth. And you see, if you put the word Earth in a circle, you see it reveals the word hot. So we are talking about the hot, the ab or the ib, comedically understood. Now, uh, this next slide shows us, though, that our symbols have been co-opted. Uh, and we see here Wasser and his symbols of power uh, and his crowning, but we also see how our symbols have been co-opted by Christianity in this same dawning or adorning of these symbols. So I have been relentless, relentless in our work, in my work in tracing the symbols back to their source, back to their primary power before they have become uh, redispensed, re recapitulated, uh, distorted, and uh, in many instances uh, despiritualized and made materialized. In order to move from the unmanifest to the manifest, we must understand the comedic law of vibration. Our African ancestors gave us these key terms of Ka'ab and Ba, this metronature, which are keys to unlocking this creative process. Our African ancestors teach us that Ka is spirit. And just like the, the icons on your computer, if you click onto any one of these terms, Ka, Ab, and Ba, whole documents open up about the unfolding process of manifestation. So our African ancestors teach us that Ka is spirit, that all is spirit, and that Ka takes of the substance of itself to see itself in form. So if we begin with Ka as spirit in understanding the law of vibration, we understand that Ka is spirit and Ka is spirit is matter at its lowest level of vibration and that matter is spirit at its highest level of vibration. That all is spirit. 
spirit in taking of the substance of itself can vibrate at its lower level as matter and matter in vibrating on a high eternal spiral is spirit at a higher vibration. So our African ancestors teach that Ka in this diagram here, this next, the same slide, we have Ka in its double aspect as, as spirit and Ka taking of the substance of itself to see itself in form, like you sitting in your chair there uh, in the audience. And so there's this physicalizing aspect of Ka where it takes of the substance of itself to see itself in form. Moreover, Ka is spirit takes of the substance of itself to have consciousness in form. So we see that here uh, as the Ab or the Ib, which we've already been talking a bit about. This Ka as, as spirit taking of the substance of itself to see itself in form has its correspondence with Oset, the, 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 the matter or physicalizing aspect of the Divine Trinity. And Ka as spirit taking of the substance of itself to have consciousness in form is the Haru aspect of ourselves. This, this corresponds also with the heart as the Ka corresponds with the creative center. I'll show you a diagram a, a little bit later. Now, we have talked about how Ka, uh, Ab, the Ab, is the seat of conscience and growing soul consciousness. And as that consciousness grows, as we become more conscious, that Ab becomes Ba, which our African ancestors understood as the soul. Later, Christianity would say, take a part of this and describe this as my father and I are one, or my father and I becoming one. But instead, comedically understood as we trace back to its primal meaning and source, we want to understand that it is, as we become, as Ab becomes Ba, we have Horu becoming as Oset and Osur, as Ab becomes the fullness of Ba in its consciousness, we have the uniting of Ka and Ba, of spirit and matter, of mother and father within us. So here we have the divine trinity, and as I've indicated, the Ka Aba corresponds with the divine trinity of Oset, Haru, and Os Osur. And in this diagram, we see this, laid, this trinity laid out in the tree of life in these three aspects of divinity, where we see in this Ka triangle, we see Oset mother, spirit matter. And we see in the Ab triangle, Haru, which is son daughter. And we see Osir Ba, father, in the Ba triangle as spirit matter. So we see this divine trinity, which is our temple, laid out uh, linearly here. So what is the Genesis story, the story of creation? Because we're talking about seeking the secrets of conscience and, and consciousness, seeking the secrets and the science of consciousness. Well, our African ancestors were, as I said, masters in this science. And they weren't waiting for the big bang of science in this creation story. They had their own understanding of that creation story. In this Genesis story, uh, we must at first come back to darkness, uppercase darkness or blackness, versus lowercase darkness, small d, uh, darkness. This lowercase darkness is, is, some people fear darkness, but we, we would only fear lowercase darkness of our own making, it's, which is a planetary darkness, which is the accumulation of 
wrong thought, word, and deed on our planet, we would not fear true darkness, capital D, true blackness, capital B, uh, uppercase darkness and blackness that our African ancestors have taught us about. This, this darkness is also called the, the, the aman or the unmanifest, the unseen, the hidden. It is the fount of all possibility. It is the boundless, uh, the eternal, uh, all in all. It is without point and without circumference. Uh, it is limitless. Uh, it is uh, access to all power uh, and all uh, potential. It is the source from which creation arises and to which creation returns. So our African ancestors call this um, the Amun, Ka, the noon, the waters of space, the infinitude out of which creation arises. And in the Genesis story, our African under ancestors understood in this blackness, one has to uh, re-immerse themselves in this consciousness of blackness. I, I, I have a way of almost thinking about it in terms of this th thick black oil where one is within and immersed within. And in that blackness uh, and that darkness in the creative process, we un understand that there is a stirring within the waters of noon. There is a stirring within the Aman. And in that stirring, uh, there is the arising of the fire of Ra. The arising of the fire of Ra. In that blackness, in that stirring, uh, the arising of the fire of Ra. Like striking uh, the flint on a matchbox cover, we see this arising of this fire. And this fire is the birth of the children of Ra, who are Shu and Tefnut. And they are the centripetal and the centrifugal forces in nature. And in their arising of the twin forces of Shu and Tefnut, they begin this circumgyration within the waters of noon, within the Aman, within this blackness, this fire uh, of, of, of rising and within the circumgyration. And this circumgyration raises a mound within the fires of, within the waters of noon, whereby one flame then pierces that mound that has been raised, impregnating and, and fecundating. And there is this explosion now of light, which is called universe. This is humbly pictured here as we now see the arising out of this blackness, the cosmic egg, the universal egg coming into being, the world egg. We picture this humbly. And this cosmic egg is the also the arising of the eye of Ra. On a, on a cosmic level, we can think of the rising of the eye of Ra on a local level in our sky, our sky as we look out uh, on a sunny day. But there is the arising of the eye of Ra on, on cosmically understood as universe. And our African ancestors call this the universal Ba. They also gave us other symbolism to understand this process. In this slide here, we see the symbol of Kepera. And Kepera is this scarab beetle, uh, which represents beginnings or coming into being. And this scarab beetle, uh, what it does is it lays its eggs and then it rolls it into the doom, a doom ball. And you can see that ball here in this slide. 
And this slot, in this ball, really is a symbol for cosmos or the or universe in total, in in that it contains all the to be birthed lives, on that uh, most grandest of cosmic levels, Kepera. So we have now the arising of the all-seeing eye upon the primordial waters of noon. And we see how the unmanifest moves into the manifest, this universal ba, this first arising of the eye of Ra. Now, who is doing the awareness? Who and what is looking and having the awareness? Who are those lives, those levels of consciousness? As we have Ba now as an intification of Ka, Ba is an encapsulation of spirit. Ba is an intification of Ka. We now see this intification. We have this beings that are ensouling at each level of this creative process. And so let's look at this these eyes or this, these levels of awareness. Now in this scale here, we have the Assyrianization, the Assyrianization of consciousness. Now, our African ancestors teach us that Ka, Ab, and Ba are happening on every level. There is, in every aspect of creation, there is that which is Ka, Ab, and Ba, in the tree, in the plant, in the, um, in, within animals, uh, with, within all aspects of nature. So let us start on a smaller scale and look at this process moving up the scale using the law of correspondence. The law of correspondence allows us to, to move the awareness from one level to uh, have insight into the levels above. So if we look at the Ba as an intification of spirit, we can look at Ba Adam. We can look at the Adam, uh, the nature or the God in form that is ensouling the Adam. We can move to the nature, God in form that is ensouling the, the, the tree. We can look at the nature, ba, God in form that is ensouling an animal. We can look at the nature, God in form that is ensouling man and woman. We can look at the nature, God in form, ba, that is ensouling the, the, our planet and then our, and then our sun. We can look at the nature, ba, God in form that is ensouling the constellation, like the constellation of Aries or the constellation of Pisces. We can look at Ba, nature, God in form that is ensouling our, the Milky Way galaxy. So we can look at uh, super cosmic constellations, galaxies, and so on, up to including the nature, Ba, God in form that is ensouling universe in total. There is that of form and consciousness and spirit and souling at every level of creation. So let's look at a local level of consciousness and creation. What is happening on a local level? And let us turn now in this slide to Ba, man, God in form, man and woman in form, and Ba, God or nature that is uh, planet, uh, Earth in form. And this brings us to our apparatus, which is Ka'aba, the Great Pyramid is the Tree of Life Merkaba. So we begin to look at our Merkaba body of light, and which is the apparatus of consciousness. And how are we Man registering these states of consciousness. In order to register these states of consciousness, we must look at the apparatus, the equipment, the temple, 
the monument building. Our African ancestors were masters in building these monuments so that we could reflect the divine. And this is the monument that we are building. We are building in Ka'aba, Merkaba, we are building this lighted temple. Now, we are all equal in essence. We are all Ka. Ka is spirit. But we are not all equal in consciousness, meaning we, like the ra a radio, we have access to radio waves. If radio waves are like consciousness, we have access to it. However, we are not all the same in our apparatus uh, of radio, which it, some radios may have their dials turned this way. Uh, some radios may have their antennas turned that way. So we are equal in essence, but we are working on our equipment. And the apparatus that, the, that a human uses for its vehicle of consciousness is not the same apparatus as the tree is using. It's not the same apparatus as the planet Earth is using. It's not the same apparatus that the sun is using. So we want to look at the apparatus in building the lighted temple. In this next slide, Ka'aba, building the lighted temple, we begin by looking at our spiritual equipment, which is both human and divine. And this brings us into keys to understanding Ka'aba. The tree of life is the great pyramid Merkaba. And we are understanding the triplicity that is the template of our own monument building, which is ourself, which is coinciding with the divine trinity within of Osir, Osset, and Haru. So we start in this next slide with the simple diagram of a, of a house. You have a square frame, a triangle roof, and Ka'aba, the Great Pyramid, is this blueprint, uh, this divine cosmogram or map for building this structure. And, and the divine trinity, we need a carpenter for this building. And who does Christianity say is the divine carpenter? Well, they might say Jesus, and what we say comedically understood is it is Haru, and it is, or comedically understood, it is the Ka rest within us that is the divine builder of this temple. And so here we see the divine trinity pictured again. Now, I'm not going to go too deeply into the story of Wasir and Osset and Haru. We trust you'll come to the academy and learn more in your studies. But there are four key points to make about this story of Osir, uh, Osset, and Haru. The first is that Osir and Osset lived harmoniously and ruled their kingdom harmoniously as king and queen. The second is Haru is the son or, or daughter, uh, son-daughter of Osir and Osset. And the third is that Osir is slain by his jealous brother Set. And fourthly, a fierce battle ensues between Haru and Set in which Haru must avenge his father's death and be restored as the rightful heir to the throne. Now this symbolizes the reestablishing of the kingdom of earth within. So we see the components of this story and how this relates to our efforts at temple building. Now in this next slide, we are still with our basic house frame, uh, the square, uh, in that first triangle, which constitutes, uh, as it were, the roof here. But in these first three levels, we have, the, we have what can be considered the first floor, the second floor, the third floor in this square or this quaternary, this building of this lighted temple. Now the first floor is our physical body. And in building the lighted temple, we are working to build that body and render it fit so that uh, it has vitality uh, and, it, and it serves. Uh, in our work of um, 
as, as, as souls in, in this incarnation. Now the physical body is, may, in terms of the law of vibration, the physical body is made of this more dense physical substance, this form, this physicalized substance. And you know that the physical body has a substance if you've gone to the gym and you've lifted weights and you've experienced some soreness in that substance uh, because um, that soreness would inform you on that physical level of, of the body and the work to be done to render that body fit so it's vital and serves the work of, of spirit. When we move to the next level, we are likewise working with a substance, but that substance is more subtle than the substance of the physical body. And that substance brings us into the emotional body. And that, uh, and we are working that emotional substance according to the law of vibration. Now, if I say to you, show me an emotion, how do you locate that, uh, like the physical body? How do you locate an emotion? But you already you're moved to a level, another level of awareness when I say, show me an emotion. But we can sense and see these emotions. For example, if you were outside of the room and I s sent you a heartfelt smile, that energy would concourse the ethers and, and you would be invited to come in. Similarly, if I shot you a look that could kill, that energy would concourse the ethers, strike you in the chest, and you'd be repelled and you, you would not want to come in. So we can see that the even though this is an energy that's more subtle, a substance that's more subtle, we can sense and locate the substance of this second soul body, which is the, the emotional body, which has a name that our African ancestors have given it. Our African ancestors actually teach us there are seven levels of consciousness. Uh, and so we'll, we'll speak about that. In this next level, we now move to this third floor, or this third level, which is the mental body. And this substance of the mental body is even more refined, more subtle than the substance below. You'll know you are in that mental substance, even if you are having maybe difficulty in understanding some of these aspects of this presentation. Because when we work with that more subtle substance, we are working that very refined matter. We have to knead that matter like dough so of the mental substance. You know, sometimes what we say is something is over our head. Oh, I can't understand that it's over over my head. But and and sometimes we can be at very um heavy or deep kinds of discussions and think, um, oh, I, I need, I have a headache <laughs> or, um, but this working, this mental substance is something we must push through just like we push through working with the physical substance in the gym, just like we have to push through working with the emotional substance of, of fear or, 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 or even love. We have to work with those substances. So when we move to the mental body, we are needing that substance, that, 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 that substance of the mental body, so it becomes light and, 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 because it's, and so it's malleable and becomes more and more light-filled and more receptive to the higher spiritual uh, energies or, or soul bodies. Uh, above that we can access in consciousness. This, um, and this essentially, these three levels are the three levels that traditional psychology uh, stays on, uh, very 
not much going beyond these first three levels, which, which is essentially building the character, character building. And we want to build character. We want to build the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body. But moreover, do we just want to have a, 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 a building? Don't we want it to be light-filled? How do we have a light-filled vessel of a light-filled temple? That seeking of light brings us to the higher soul bodies, which our African ancestors teach us about. And that brings us to the next slide, because traditional psychology really deals with just three of these seven soul bodies. So we have been talking in these, uh, this prior slide of character building. And you see when you dispel this word character, uh, it reveals the words uh, ka erector or ka ra actor. In comedic language, K and C are, can be substituted. So we, in this character building, are really erecting Ka, or the, erecting the spirit of, within us. We are really the Ra, or the, or the sun, the actor in this character building. In this next slide, we see how our African ancestors have taught us to unpack our whole uh, spiritual equipment. And, and this slide here moves us into the higher Ab and Ba triangles. So at first we've been working within this Ka triangle, which really is the quaternary or the building or the fashioning of the temple, the squaring of the corners, the, the mastering of the physical the emotional and the mental soul bodies, the character development. But our African ancestors move us to unpack now the higher soul body of the Ab and the Ba triangles. And in the Mechenecher, in the Pertemru, uh, they teach us the naming of these soul bodies, which are called the Kab, the, the Ka Kabit, the Sahu, the Ab, the Shechem, the Ku, and the Ba. So our African ancestors teach us how to indwell on all of these soul levels. So let's continue now that the, we've talked about the character building. When, we, when we're building character, we, it, you might equate this to your computer. You, when you're building the physical, the emotional, and the mental soul bodies, you are really fashioning the computer. But what is the software? And, and that's why we move into the Ab and the Ba triangle to understand how to unlock the secrets and the science of consciousness within us. If we do not unlock the secrets of the science and the consciousness within us and come to indwell these higher soul bodies within us, then we can be in a position where, um, as um, the masses, where others are utilizing our apparatus, our physical, emotional, and mental body, and we're running off of somebody else's uh, uh, software or soul program, coming into the unfoldment of our spiritual equipment and apparatus leads us and renders our capacity to operate on our own soul program. So let's now move to the Ab Triangle. And in this slide, uh, as we've already been talking about, the Ab Triangle is the seat of conscience and growing soul consciousness. It is where we are, we are relating spirit and matter, father and mother, where harmonizing and trying to bring into accord these discordant energies of, of life and living. It is where we are making a choice to bring, to either work on our own personal will or to come into alignment with divine will and purpose and plan for our lives. How to see more into the divine archetype of the universe and bring that divine 
textual design into being? How do we glimpse within that divine architectural design and then build a world in accord with that and build our, build our temple in accord with that and build our lives and our community in accord with that? Uh, even the young people have said about this world that there's you know something whack about uh, this world and and how do we build in alignment in accord with the divine archetypal design well we have to have the equipment that can at least glimpse into what that divine archetypal design might be so like looking at the the uh, the box cover of a of a of a multitudinous piece puzzle uh, there is a way to glimpse the box cover and then set ourselves in motion to build an accord with that but if we have uh, just dumped all the pieces out and, and 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 we're trying to put things back together but we don't make any reference to a divine archetypal uh, plan and purpose and intent, then we are without uh, spiritual guidance. We are without that inner guidance that that can see and can know. And so that now brings us into the development of the first eye. This development speaks to the completing of our circuitry as Kaaba. If we look at this next slide, we see pictured here the linear tree of life. And then we see pictured the bending back as, as we form the Merkaba body of light, vehicle light, like the nude pose, the bending back of the tree of life upon itself, like in the nude posture, or like the Sankofa symbol of, of bending back. And we see also the, the double uh, Merkut or pyramid, great pyramids, one above and one below, which form the Merkaba body of light. So it is in this development of the first eye that we are completing our circuitry and developing this spherical consciousness. And that is replicated in the very monument of ourselves as we move from a linear consciousness into this spherical consciousness, this spherical um, sightedness, like in the newt posture, like in the Sankofa symbol, the pyramid above and the period of pyramid below in the Ka'aba, the Great Pyramid, is the Tree of Life Merkaba symbol. So here uh, we are now looking at this development of the first eye in this egoic spherical consciousness. And this egoic, don't get confused with Freudian terms, uh, this is about Kemet and Kemetic science. Uh, we are becoming that egg uh, in that egoic spherical consciousness. So I use this symbol. I'm very fond of using this symbol. One might say, well, why, is, why does Dr. Nateri have a disco ball? But this is a wonderful symbol of the first eye because in this first eye, uh, which we can, will locate here between our eyebrows, and we have that inner sightedness, that inner ability to see and know. However, it is not just this uh, inner eye, but as we move into our body of light to indwell the Makaba light body, we actually become as this sphere, this spherical consciousness where every aspect of our being is 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 alive and sensing and knowing so let's go into this what is this ability to see the pot and the whole and the relationship in between well uh, in this first eye consciousness 
as we move from this linear sidedness into the spherical consciousness, we come to see within this individuated mirrored frame. Maybe you can see this individuated mirrored frame right here. This is the ability to stand within this light, this eye, and see through that individuated mirrored frame. And then we have the capacity to see through this individuated mirrored frame. And we have the capacity to see the perspective and hold the perspective between in, in this individuated frame and, and in this individuated frame. So as we step within this first eye, we are able to see this mirrored frame in relationship to this individuated mirrored frame into relationship with this and in relationship with this. We are able to see and know one at a timeness, the part we are able to see and know the relationship in between, and we are able to see and know all at onceness. So we are in this one at a timeness and simultaneous all at onceness. Different from the consciousness you see, uh, let's say, at the nightly news, where you have two people who come on and one is sharing uh, a perspective here and the other is sharing a perspective there and they do this back and forth and they try to wear each other down in this very linear way. What we are working for in this spherical sightedness is to have this part relationship and simultaneous all at onceness in consciousness. So let's look at this more carefully. In this slide we see the great egg of consciousness and these three primary states of consciousness, Kaaba. In other words, we understand as our African ancestors have taught us that the Ba comes forth upon earth to do the will of its Ka. Ka is spirit, taking of the substance of itself to have consciousness in form. And so when we look at this first uh, this bar consciousness, we see that bar consciousness is unitive. It's about synthesis, wholeness, interconnection. It, it affirms this is that. It, it affirms I know. It is spiritualizing. It is all at onceness. As we move into the ab consciousness, we hold the ability to be dualtive. And any time we look at consciousness or energy, we can look at it at its higher terms of spiral, in terms of its primal and optimal use, or at a lower term of the spiral in terms of its more negative or weakness or debased condition. So when we look at ob consciousness on a higher term of the spiral, ob consciousness is dualtive, it's harmonizing, it's able to balance, it's, in, it's able to relate and look at um, harmonizing these, uh, what can be discordant energies and bringing them into harmony. It's, it can be reconciliative or in a lower spiral, it can be combative. It is about reconciling opposites. It's a consciousness that affirms this and or that. And the ob consciousness affirms, I know that I know. The key words are solarizing and in betweenness. When we look at Ka consciousness, Ka consciousness at a higher turn the spiral is about the particulate, about the pot, each individuated mirrored frame. Uh, but on a lower turn of the spiral, Ka consciousness can become separative. Now when we, when we are within particulate consciousness on a higher turn of the spiral, this is the ability to see the part, to understand multiplicity, individualizing, analysis, division, diversity, dis discernment, discrimination of a higher turn of the spiral. Uh, there is nothing wrong with being able to see the pot in all its beauty, uh, like, like looking at um, a flower and, and hold, beholding all its beauty, uh, and then moving to look at all the beauty of another flower within the greater family of flowers. When Ka becomes 
or this particular consciousness becomes separative, that is when we witness the part without the underlying unity, when we've lost the ability to hold the, the, the underlying unity. And so we then become immersed in, the, in this separative consciousness, uh, this versus that. Ka is this materializing aspect. It's the ability to, to, to see this one at a timeness and the ability also to see the all at onceness. Now, when we put this together, we have Ka Aba, which is infused, blended consciousness, a consciousness that, that affirms, I know the one in the many. I know the one in the same self and all the seeming self appearances. And its key words are simultaneous, one at a timeness, in betweenness, all at onceness. So, how are we working for this unitive consciousness? What is required to have a unitive consciousness, a spherical consciousness? Well, this brings us to first look at what has been happening in this unfolding journey of consciousness in our world period? And that brings us to look and understand what time it is. Now, our African ancestors understood cycles of time. And our African ancestors lived in a cycle of time where there was a spiritualization of consciousness. Yes, our African ancestors live in a, in a time of greater uh, spiritual energies uh, and light on, in our, on our planet and in our consciousness. And our African ancestors uh, steadily watch that shade go down on our planet as we made our descent from that spiritual consciousness into this more dense uh, materialization in consciousness. And the consciousness that now grips our planet is a materialization in consciousness. You'll see in this diagram that we are, as a humanity, just in this vertex of the V, having consciousness, having made its deepest descent from the spiritualization into this materialization in consciousness. And now in this vertex of the V, we are just at this hatch mark as humanity is now making its hard, arduous uphill climb out of this materialization in consciousness into this re-spiritualization, uh, into this evolutionary ascent uh, in consciousness. Uh, we are now in the midst of those contending forces, uh, both material and spiritual in, this, in the vertex of this V. And even though the death knell has been dealt to the materialization of consciousness, uh, we are still in its grips. Uh, it is still a, a, a form that is, is, is in the process of shattering, but is still um, holding uh, humanity. Uh, and the work now is of making this shift as the shade is now gradually going up on our planet and our earth is being bathed with these spiritual energies of reascent. And we are the same ancestors that watched the shade go down as we made this planetary journey and into, from a time of greater light, into this uh, materialization of consciousness. And we are the same ancestors that are now watching the shade gradually go up and shards of spiritual energy bathing our consciousness now so that we are making this resurrection and this reascension now into sacredness. You know, one of the stories that I, I, I like to talk about that really um, speak, I think, to our deepest descent, uh, and, and I think our, is captured so well in our deepest descent, uh, is the following, and that is the one that 
is described by Alex Haley uh, in Roots as uh, Kunta Kinte is making his journey here uh, across in the ships of enslavement to be uh, to the Americas. And Alex Haley describes how uh, Kunta Kinte is chained and on his back and how his muscles from the rocking of the ship of enslavement has abraded his muscles uh, down to the bone so that his bone is exposed and how uh, he is surrounded and, and chained uh, to other Africans uh, and the, 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 the stench uh, from this condition where there are those who have died or are in the process of dying around him. There are those who uh, right where they lay are, are vomiting and urinating and defecating on themselves. Uh, this, this wretched condition of, of darkness that humanity had had undergone. And there's a point where Alex Haley describes how Kunta in the midst of this exhaustion dozes off to sleep. And in that restless sleep, he has a terrible nightmare. Uh, a nightmare of just tremendous proportion from which he awakes from with, 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 with screams only to realize that his nightmare or his reality had far exceeded in its wretchedness the nightmare that he had experienced. And that is just a, a caption of, of that vertex of the V, how, how we, in that deepest descent, come to the place where our worst nightmare became our reality. So developing universal unitive consciousness. This brings me to talk about the secrets of race and consciousness uh, in one of my books. And in, in the secrets of race and consciousness, I talk about which state of consciousness might we be in of the three primary types. As we've looked at this cycle of time in moving from times on our planetary unfoldment uh, and evolution of times more spiritual and times more material. And my, in my book, I talk about the seven psycho-spiritual types in unfolding consciousness. And secrets in race, of race and consciousness is suggestive of developing a new typology of consciousness, which would examine the propensity for operating along particular lines or operating in a more blended consciousness admixture or blended consciousness admixture, which I call BKA, um, BKA uh, capacity. So how do we move into this blended consciousness admixture given that we've gone from t time spiritual to more material and are now moving back into the spiritual. In this next diagram, we see the seven psycho-spiritual types in consciousness, and they are derived out of the three, out of combining the three primary egoic states of consciousness. So we begin with the unitive, which we've talked about, and the unitive again is wholeness, synthesis, interconnection. I know this is that. Then the the which is the, which is type three. Then uh, dualtive consciousness, 
which is harmonizing, reconciling opposites, balance, I know that I know this and, or this, this and, or that, or this and that. Okay? And then the particulate or separative consciousness, which knows multiplicity, division, diversity, analysis, I think I know this, not that, or that, not this. So in this type, so one may be type three, because remember I talked earlier about how we are moving now into this three, four, three, four, five triangle, the, 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 the mathematics of this. How are we moving into this three, four, five triangle? So type three would be unitive, type four would be dualtive, type five would be particulate. So one might, one's consciousness might primarily be unitive, type three. One's consciousness might be primarily dualtive, type four, or one's consciousness might be primarily uh, particulate or, or separative or more materializing, type five. Then when we look at combining those, uh, this brings us into the total of the seven different types because we ha can have type three, type four, type five. We can have type three, four, which would be a combination of three and four, which would be a combination of unitive and dualtive ability to see wholeness, but, it, but the dualtive would bring in that reconciling, uh, harmonizing aspect. Type three and five would bring in that unitive, but it would also bring in that particulate. I mean, imagine a consciousness that would hold the unitive where you can see more comprehensively uh, in that aspects of the universe and at the same time go into the particulate like the atom. Imagine that type of consciousness. Then you have type four, five, which would bring in the dualtive and the particulative, particulate, and then finally, uh, three, four, five, which would bring in all three aspects. So what would the consciousness be that would bring in both, uh, which, which would bring in all three aspects, unitive, dualtive, particulate, three, four, five. What would that look like? Where might we find an example of that in humanity? And where, where are the challenges today in the planetary consciousness of the human family in terms of where which consciousness humanity is most polarized in. We know that we are in a very materializing, very type five uh, consciousness as we speak. But how do we move into that uh, more unitive, um, dualtive, uh, and particulate, that three, four, five? And let's look at an example of three, four, five. When we look at the human family, what would be an example of a three, four, five, that blended spherical consciousness of unitive, dualtive, and particulate? Well, when I think of an example in the human family, I think about Nelson Mandela. Why do I think about Nelson Mandela? Because Nelson Mandela was able to stand in that unitive consciousness. He was able to see and glimpse uh, wholeness. And at the same time, he was able to stand in that particulate consciousness and see the part that Africans had played and the importance of that part. He was also able to stand in that dualtive, which was that relating and reconciling and harmonizing and balancing and trying to work with all those discordant energies uh, of the time where he was trying to blend and balance that three, four, five in consciousness, that unitive, that dualtive, and that particulate in consciousness. I see Nelson Mandela as someone in that spherical sidedness, in the ability to hold all of those elements together simultaneously as someone who really spared humanity and our planet a bloodbath. Working with all of those human elements in consciousness. I see Dr. Martin Luther King in his work very similarly. And because of their work, we see 
an example of these two men, how they have brought a greater increase of light in the world because of the development of the first eye that was within them and that is within them. Now, <clears throat> but there's some confusion around um, Africans. Let's talk about the confusion among the African family. And I'll talk about some confusion in the European family as well. But uh, there is some confusion in the African family about what it means to be unitive or what it means to be universal. You know, for some Africans, uh, being universal and being unitive in consciousness means, consciousness means just let's love everybody, just let's love everybody. But they are confused about the metaphysics of what that takes. Because they'll say, I don't want to know about things African. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to learn about the part. They don't want to know about the part that that we have played. And that is not a part that we look at divorced from the underlying unity of all of humanity, but we have contributed and we must know and play and teach the part that we have played. We must know and teach the part that we have played. So as Africans, it is very important that we understand the importance of the part we have played in this world period. We must understand the part, the, the relationship between and the underlying unity within the whole human family. So when we, when we seek to be unitive and yet we forget the part that we have played, then we want to return to the feet of our mother, Africa, because this, so this uh, terrestrial journey that we have gone on as Africans who made their outgoing footsteps out of Africa 50, 60,000 years ago to populate the world is but a metaphor for the journey on a celestial realm as the celestial family. And when we return to the feet of our mother, we don't want to return empty handed. We don't want to return not knowing the part we have played in this grand drama of the unfoldment of consciousness in humanity. And we don't want to return empty handed without our family. We, want, we don't want to show up at the feet of our mother without our, our primary, our, our, our family uh, with us. And what would that be like to return to the feet of the mother and we don't know the part we have played. We are not even showing up with an intact family. So we must do the work of understanding the part and the underlying unity. On the other hand, uh, I think it can be said that uh, this Aryan consciousness, this European consciousness focuses extensively on the part and in a separative consciousness, in a very material consciousness, to the point where other parts are excluded, other parts are not seen as inclusive in the underlying unity of creation. And that is a consciousness that, um, well, if we can talk about consciousness corrections, there's a consciousness correction uh, in both aspects so that the three, four, five are unfolding, the unitive, the dualtive, 
and the particulate that there may be more light on earth and it is in this unitive consciousness where we we have in that bending back of the tree of life as I talk about in my new book uh, in Makaba the great pyramid is the tree of life Kaaba in that bending back in that knitting of ourselves back together again in this spherical first eye development that we undergo the crowning and the seating of ourselves as king as Haru upon his or her throne as heir to Osir and Oset. Now as Haru who was who was us uh, as the Karest uh, you have united the seeming duality of Ka and Ba of mother and father of spirit and matter within the constitution which is both human and divine and this knitting or uniting of this these dualities within is the crowning and the seating of Haru upon his or her throne as the son S-U-N and son S-O-N daughter that is within we become this divine presence on earth and this is not to be distorted as the material presence at Christmas or the so-called uh, birth of the Sun S-O-N so let's talk about these crowns and their uniting uh, the Pertemru teaches us about the hymn of Osir in reference to these crowns in the book of coming forth by day and what we are taught is that uh, the hymn says glory be to Osir Unnefer, uh, Lord or Neb of the crowns of the north and the south, Lord of the lofty white crown, exalted being, homage to thee, King of King, Lord of Lords, Prince of Princes. So this uniting of the crowns, uh, we learn in our history, uh, it takes place in, in recorded time by the Nesubiti King Namur or Menes in around 31 uh, BCE and he is crowned king in the uniting of the north and the south of, of Kemet. So the very uh, topography, the very uh, geography of Kemet itself is a template itself in the uniting of the north and the south within us. The very land itself speaks to our building of our monument, our template, our divine science for, for this unification in, in consciousness. So as King Namur unites the north and the south of the, the landmass Kemet, which is really the landmass within us, uh, he is donned with the red and the white crown of unification. And you see this pictured here. We know this from the Namur tablet where we see the white crown of the south and the red crown of the north. However, our African symbols have been co-opted and despiritualized de and materialized because here we see the comedic in this next slide, the comedic white and red crown uh, of the of Kemet becoming the distorted Santa Claus hat at Christmas time, and we see here Pope Benedict the Sixteenth donning uh, at, at some quote festive occasion at the Vatican wearing this Santa style hat uh, called the Kamaru, and you see clearly here. The distortion of our symbols of the red and the white crown by this uh, Christian um, symbol. In this uniting of the north and the south, we have in the bending back of the tree of life the knitting of ourselves back together that we may indwell in our full spherical and egoic consciousness 
the Merkaba body of light. And in that bending back in this next slide, we see that rising or resurrection of the sun daughter, the Karest, coming to the apex of the triangle. You see, as we do that bending back, we see now Haru, which is the heart within us, coming to the apex of the triangle. But moreover, we also see Osir and Oset, the king and queen within us, coming in secret embrace within the king and queen's chamber within. So the very monument building is within the very temple uh, of the pyramid for our access and, and reclamation. We can see the way of knitting ourselves back together in the very monuments that our African ancestors gave us. This also brings us to comedically understand the Tamares tree or what is also the Eureka tree. And we know from the story of Osir that, and you must come to the academy to study more the story of Osir, Osir and Haru, that when Osir was slain by his jealous brother Set, uh, and, and he was uh, placed in the sarcophagus and, and slain, his body and the sarcophagus uh, were drifted to Byblos. And as that sarcophagus um, uh, came to Byblos, this beautiful tamarisk tree or eureka tree grew around it. Now the tamarisk tree is, is our evergreen tree. And there's so much symbolism to the evergreen and the, the uh, e eternal one or the ever coming one or the everlasting life and the renewal and the vitality of life that the evergreen tree symbolizes. And you see here in, the, in this uh, slide the uh, osir surrounded by the tamarisk tree. We must reclaim our symbols of resurrection. And so here in my books uh, Ka Aba, building light a temple. Long ago, I dispelled this word, the tamarisk tree, and you see the keys here for dispelling words and symbols. Again, the word tamarisk is put in a circle, and you can see that it reveals the word Christmas. We understand in the Kemetic language that K can be sub substituted for C, and right here we see how the very word tamarisk becomes the word. Christmas and Christmas tree. So in order to give our children the, the primal meaning of Christmas in, in all of its spiritual implications and to wrest it from this materialization that it has become, we must have celebrations that honor the Tamarisk tree comedically understood as the tree of resurrection. Now that brings us to this next slide uh, where we see the tamarisk tree is the jet pillow. It is the, the, the symbol of stability. And this uh, jet pillow or tet pillow is the karestmas tree or the Christmas tree. It represents the seven soul bodies given to us by our comedic science of psychology and spirituality. It is, it's how to comedic, be comedically conscious and have a comedically conscious caressness. And so here in this next slide, we see the seven soul bodies. And as we adorn and decorate this caressness tree, let us understand its comedic meaning as the jet, the jet pillow as the tamarisk, as the eureka, as the caressness tree, and that the spheres of light are really the natural. You see here in the slide, 
the digit pillow on the left. And if you separate these columns in the digit pillow, you can see that it becomes the Charestmus tree. The, the, and, it, and it becomes and reveals the seven soul bodies. And at each of these stage, stages in this unfoldment, we see the Necheru as adorning this symbol of life, the tree of life, the Charesmus tree. And Haru, at the horizon, at the apex, becomes the star on this tree, or the one who has been found, uh, Makaru, truer voice. In the further co-opting of our symbols, we come to see here how the sleigh, the sledge, the, the discerning between the sledge and the sleigh, comedically understood. So pictured here, we see the ark of the god of Sakur on its sledge. And this was the name given to the Sekur boat, or, or the Henu. Uh, and when we dispel this word uh, and look at this symbol, we can see that the Sekur boat would then become materialized into the, which is called a sledge, which then became materialized into the sleigh of Christmas. So how was the sledge used? Well, this sacred boat, uh, which has profound meaning in the African spirituality, uh, we learn from the Pertamru the following, that on the great day of the festival of Sakur, which was celebrated in many places throughout Kemet, the ceremony of placing the Sekhar boat upon its sledge was performed at sunrise. So we're now we're talking about the rising of the sun. And this whole ceremony was under the direction of the high priest of Menefer. And this uh, official was expected to lift the Sekhar boat upon its sledge and to march at the head of the process as priest, which drew the loaded sledge around the sanctuary. And by this action, the revolution of the sun and the other celestial bodies was symbolized. So as the Sekhar boat is drawn upon its sledge, we are honoring the divine presence on earth of, of the sun, the birthing of the sun. If you see here, you can see the antlers here on the sledge and the antlers of the sleigh that in this instance is drawing the Christmas presents or packages of Santa Claus in its dematerialized, in its materialized and despiritualized presentation. So in order to come into the secrets in the science of consciousness, we must take our symbols which have been co-opted and restore them to their primal uh, essence and be a part of their re-spiritualization. In this slide here, we see the unfoldment of the human family as Africans made their footsteps out of Africa to populate the world, uh, as demonstrated here in the mural of Ramesses the, the third, uh, we see that uh, the unfoldment of the seeming racial types in this unfoldment of the human family, uh, this unfoldment of the seeming African type, seeming uh, Semitic type, seeming uh, European or Aryan type. So this unfoldment in consciousness, the, the unfoldment in the human family that we have undergone, this is the humanity now in consciousness, the co planetary admixture in consciousness that now dominates the earth is this planetary admixture of Asaka, African, Semitic, Aryan, consciousness and mixture. 
we are working as this planetary blend in consciousness at the point in our earth evolution where we come before the scale of my art in this planetary blending of consciousness to have the weighing of the planetary heart and to come as Haru before the Lord of the world, Osir, Neb, Lord of the world, and to come as a presence, not presence and packages beneath the Christmas tree, but to have built the lighted temple that we express now the light of the world in our developing spherical consciousness so that we can affirm that we have been good stewards of the earth as Osir, the Lord of the world, is good steward of the earth in that we have been a good steward of the mineral kingdom, of the vegetable kingdom, of the human kingdom, and of the kingdom of souls. And it's then that we can affirm Nuk Osir, Nuk Oset. I have become as Osir. I have become as Oset. And in that knitting ourselves back together in that full circle seeingness and sightedness and our ability to see um, the unitive consciousness, the, the relationship and the part that we are the resurrecting sun, the charest, in that bending back in our growing soul consciousness in our growing conscience and consciousness, we are able to affirm Nuk Osir, Nuk Oset, Nuk Haru, Ka'aba, Merkaba. Thank you. Dua O. We come now to serve and say the rising sun's inside. Ascension into sacredness, all our gathering in. Reascension into sacredness from the sight.